In the last stream, we began working through the Digital Age questline, we went through to the Nether, and we managed to get our first set of machines from the Alchemistry mod, those being the Combiner, the Compactor, and the Dissolver. And right at the end of the last stream, we made the Mana Flux Field, which I've placed down over here, because this allows us to convert the Mana in our Mana Pool into power that our machines can use. And so if we do something like this, and I guess also like this, that should leave this side here free to receive more mana, and it should allow us to fill all three of these machines up with power for us to use going forward. So my plan for today's stream is going to be to try and get a kind of a staggering amount of EMC, or at the very least to start working through some of the Project E, Project EX questline over here. To do that, I think we first have to work on this quest right here, which wants us to get Graphite. Graphite is thankfully very easy to make. It is just four carbon that we place into a combiner. The combiner is here. If we place in the carbon, it is gonna make us Graphite. Not particularly fast, but as per usual, we can make that a little bit faster with the Temporal Pouch. Once we have at least one Graphite, that quest is going to complete. And as I mentioned in the last episode, I believe that the process here is that we take that graphite, we turn it into graphite dust, and then we can turn 16 graphite dust into one diamond, and diamonds do indeed have an EMC. So once we have 16 graphite, we can then put that 16 graphite into the compactor. Now, the problem with the compactor is that it can also make coal and charcoal from graphite and if you just put the graphite in it will automatically try and make charcoal so what we have to do here is open recipe selection type in graphite select the graphite dust and then click lock recipe that should lock the recipe to graphite dust and then if we put the graphite in it should make graphite dust now it is an eight to one actually so we need a ton more graphite but we do have thirty thousand emc and so getting a bunch of carbon should be very easy for us and of course we do still have our temporal pouch and so getting a ton of graphite here really shouldn't take us too long chat is pointing out the very obvious solution that graphite does have an emc value i don't need to waste my grains of time here if i just put all of this back we can throw the graphite into the transmutation tablet and then i can just pull out as much graphite as we need and put that directly into the compactor the graphite dust also never mind has an EMC value. We can take that, drop that in, and at that point we have everything that we need to get our first diamond. I will just take the 16 for now, there's no need to take any more than that. And these guys all want to go, I believe, back into the compactor. We can unlock the recipe, place in the graphite dust, and boom, we have our first diamond. Nice. The reason that that is useful is back over here, if we want to make the energy condenser, from Project E, we need diamonds. Specifically, we need four obsidian, four diamonds, and one alchemical chest. I'm gonna bookmark this. And the alchemical chest requires a diamond itself, two blocks of graphite, two more iron, and then one of each of the low, medium, and high covalence dusts, which again, thankfully, do have an EMC value. Now, these guys have had their recipes tweaked. The low covalence dusts needs carbon and silicon dioxide. That is fine, carbon we have, and then silicon dioxide we can make with silicon and oxygen. And again, I believe this is done over in the combiner. If we do this and this, that is gonna make silicon dioxide for us. Again, it does have an EMC value. We can leave that going though. That's not gonna be a problem for us. Medium covalence dust requires iron, iron oxide, which is just iron and oxygen, and then strontium carbonate, which I think we can get by dissolving redstone. Yes, we can. We could also make it in the combiner. I'm almost certain of that, but Given that redstone is fairly easy for us to come by, I feel like we might as well just grab a little bit of cosmic dust here, drop that into the mana pool, and then use that redstone to get that strontium carbonate. The dissolver being this machine on the top, the one we've not yet used, but that is going to get us some iron oxide and some strontium carbonate, so it's going to get both of those for us, which is very handy indeed. We need four of each, which we've already got. I'll stop that, and I will make sure, of course, to put these in here because uh, we probably shouldn't have wasted the redstone. We probably should have just done one of those now that I think about it. But either way, we'll make sure all of these are learned. And finally, the high covalence just, it's just carbon and a diamond, which is completely fine. Let's take one diamond out of here and let's see if we can't start bringing these together. So 
boom, there is the high covalence dust, and then the medium, we're just missing one iron that is fine. Let's do Fe, apparently typing Fe doesn't work, that's fine, we'll grab one regular old iron, that should get us the medium covalence dust. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the numbers are about there, normally you get the same amount of all three of these, but for some reason in this pack you get uh, different amounts of them, that might have something to do with their EMC values to make it so you can't kind of uh, cheese it too easily with the uh, EMC generation, but that should be all of those taken care of. And so now, if we want to make the energy condenser, we need four diamonds. We also need four obsidian. Those are quite expensive, but that should be fine, and I think is going to be worth it. And then we need one more diamond and two blocks of graphite. So graphite, we don't have, but we do have graphite ingots, and um, I feel like we might as well craft up a block of graphite. And again, just for ease of use in the future, I feel like we might as well just throw that back in, and then we'll take two of those. And at that point, chat, I think, we are basically good to go. We need two iron ingots and we need one regular Minecraft chest. And at that point, I think that our energy condenser should be good to go. So iron, I hope we have in here. We do indeed. That, I think, is everything that we need. Let's craft an alchemical chest. Let us teach the system that just in case we need another one in the future. And then finally, we can get our energy condenser. And of course, going forward, we can make as many energy condensers as we like. So the super nifty thing about the energy condenser is that by default you can't pump items into the transmutation table. If you try and put a hopper down, it just won't feed the items in. However, the energy condenser here can have items pumped into it. So if you put items... I think that was the clicker. I think the clicker was opening at quite the distance. Let me put it like here. If we open this, we can place our items in here, and that's gonna transform those items into other high EMC items. So if we can find our highest EMC item, which might be a diamond currently, what we can do is we can take that diamond, we can put that diamond in here, and now anything else that we put in here is gonna get turned into diamonds. So if we were to put all this silicon and all this oxygen in, that's gonna start processing that into diamonds. It's not massively fast though, which is the only problem. My thought process here is that we can use this click machine and we should be able to fairly easily automate the taking of cosmic dust from this draw and the pumping of that cosmic dust into the click machine. If we can do that, then we can automate the spewing of those items. We can then collect those items and ideally we want to turn them into EMC as fast as possible. So right now this energy condenser is not particularly fast. There is an energy condenser mark two, which is substantially faster. However, it is substantially more expensive. You'll see it goes from 20,000 EMC to 3.65 million EMC. Uh, that's because it requires three blocks of dark matter and three blocks of red matter, both of which we should be able to make. Red matter you make with dark matter and etanalis fuel. Dark matter you make with diamonds and etanalis fuel. Etanalis fuel you make with the Mobius fuel. Mobius fuel you make with alchemical coal and alchemical coal you make with regular coal. So we have the ability to get all the way up, we just need enough EMC to do it. The alternative pathway is EMC links. You can also pump directly into EMC links. And if you pump into EMC links, the EMC, instead of being turned into like diamonds, which we would then have to deposit manually into our transmutation table, uh, with the EMC link, it just goes straight into your network, which is better. But the trouble with the EMC link is that they start off quite bad. This basic EMC link can only import one item per second. And you've seen this work. This thing spews out like 60 items a minute. It's incredible. And so we would have to get up to potentially like 128 items a second, maybe even 256 items per second, if we wanted to run this at its full speed. Of course, we could turn this down. We don't have to run this at maximum speed all the time. For the time being, just having some kind of generation is obviously going to be better than nothing. Now, the next problem we run into, I guess, there's a few problems we've got right now, but let's see if we can get the system automated and then we can try and uh, tweak it to make it as efficient as possible after the fact. The next problem is picking up the items. And I think for that, the omnidirectional hopper from Pneumaticraft is gonna be the way to go. It does require some more compressed iron. Thankfully we have some. And then it does require a regular Minecraft chest, which we can make. The benefit of the omnidirectional hopper over the regular Minecraft hopper is that it has space for speed upgrades. And so if we were to, for example, break this grass, break this grass, let's move the energy condenser down to here. 
we could then place a hopper here. And then if we were to just box in all of this, I think we might still be able to access that chest. I think modded chests usually let you open them when there's stuff on top. It does, nice, cool. So what we should be able to do now is take some of our dust. And if we put that dust into the clicker, that's gonna do what we've seen before. It's gonna start spewing, hopefully just in front of it. But then here you'll see that the hopper, and it is a little high, the spewage. If I do, obviously the, the wood doesn't look great, but if I do this, that should get the job done. Uh, we want these obviously going down into here. And the hopper is working. I'll put a diamond in here as well, just to let that start uh, processing. But uh, over here, the hopper by default is probably not fast enough. However, if we put in the speed upgrades, it is now substantially faster at moving all of those items out. And at that point, we could probably even increase the speed of the clicker to actually have it spew more items, because right now the omnidirectional hopper is keeping up. The problem though, is how fast can the energy condenser work? Right now, it seems like it's keeping up. It seems like it's slowly but surely getting rid of the backlog. Unfortunately, the click machine does go up in batches, so you can go from one, but there's not like 1.1, you've got to go straight from one to two, I believe. I don't think having it like here versus here does anything. I think it's still one click per second. So we've got to go straight from one to two, and two clicks per second is probably too fast for the energy condenser. Yeah, you'll see we're starting to, to back up down here, and eventually it's going to fill up and they're going to start spewing. So for the time being, one click per second is where we need to be, but we can just come in here periodically, take the diamonds out, dump them in there, and that's basically the passive free EMC that we want. Of course, ideally we want to automate that process. The next problem, of course, is getting the dust in there. And I do think, actually, that, again, the omnidirectional hopper might be our answer here. Let me uh, grab my axe, because I'm fairly certain I have one, and breaking this wood without it is fairly slow but if we get rid of all this and if i pick this hopper up i think much like we saw earlier with the fluid hopper like this i think that we can actually extract from this sideways potentially that does work i think what we need to do though is we need to move the clicker put the clicker down first and then put the hopper up against the clicker so if we did this we could then put the hopper down facing that way and now that's going to move those dusts directly over into there. And of course, we can speed this up with more speed upgrades if we wanted to in the future, although it is uh, already extracting somewhat quickly. And then, of course, we just need to move this whole setup over to the new clicker. So now we should be able to turn this back up to one click per second. And that should just essentially be automated EMC for us. I am a little concerned, but it looks like with the hopper there, the items aren't spewing over the top like they were previously. And this is working. This is just generating EMC forwards. We can leave this here and over time, we're just gonna get more and more diamonds that we can then take and place into our transmutation table. Speaking of our transmutation table, first things first, let me get some food because we are very hungry, but we can now craft up the transmutation tablet. This guy is really not too difficult. And I was gonna say if we wanted to, we could kind of just get rid of the table that we have, but I feel like there's not much of a reason to do that. All we need to do is take four blocks of graphite. We then also need four blocks of obsidian and of course the philosopher's stone, all of which we have. So we'll take four of you, the philosopher's stone we've already got. And so we can go boom, that gets us yet another transmutation table. Of course, we can teach the transmutation table, the transmutation table for use in the future. And then now it's just four more graphite blocks and then the tricky bit is these four blocks of dark matter. So as we saw before, the dark matter just requires a ton of coal. I don't know if you can use charcoal for this. I don't think you can, unfortunately. And so we are going to have to get a bunch of coal, which we can get with carbon. It's just going to be a bit of a pain crafting it all. And I'm not entirely certain how much coal we need for the dark matter, but we can give this a go. We can craft this like so. Oh, and of course, once we've got one, that's my bad. Once we have, uh, we'll save the coal because we might need it for other recipes in the future. But uh, once we have one alchemical coal, we can of course just put that in like so. And then we can take as much alchemical coal as we like with EMC, which makes life a lot easier. Then we can do this. We've got Mobius fuel. We'll put that back as well. Make sure our system knows how to make that. And then we'll take just the four that we need. We can then craft those as well. That should get us our first Eternalis fuel. We'll drop that back in 
as well, and that Eternalis Fuel should then allow us to get our first Dark Matter. Never mind. Magenta Fuel? Oh, it's because I did it incorrectly, of course. We need to do something different, and we need more EMC because this is quite expensive. The Dark Matter is made with a block of diamonds and then eight Eternalis Fuel, not the Philosopher's Stone. Let us craft the block of diamond, And then we'll dump the rest of the diamonds back in here and take as much eight analysis as we can. 19 is more than enough. Boom and boom. That gets us our first dark matter. Each dark matter does have a value of 52,000 EMC. And if we're going to get the transmutation table, we need 16 dark matter, which is currently more than we have the EMC to make. We can, of course, speed this up. So currently, if we swap this to 20 ticks per second, that's gonna go crazy, but we do have our pouch, and I think we can just accelerate this to be substantially faster, right? And it looks like this hopper is also potentially a bottleneck. A surprisingly big one, actually. It's really not that fast. That's fine, let me put these in manually for now. But this is doing a pretty good job. Let's make that even faster. There we go. That's gonna get us a ton of EMC very, very quickly. All right, how much EMC do we have? We've got uh, over two stacks of diamonds. Let's dump all of those into here. That is a pretty good amount, and that's only 10 dark matter. That's still not the 16 that we need, eh? That is very expensive. These EMC links are not too... E oh, they are very expensive, actually. 1.7 million EMC, and it can only input or output one item per second. That's just because it requires these transmutation tablets. That is very, very expensive. And does have me wondering if it's actually worth, instead of spending, instead of buying the transmutation tablet first, if it's instead worth trying to focus in on the energy condenser mark two, it's obviously a lot more expensive. It requires the same four blocks of dark matter and then four blocks of red matter, which are even more expensive than the dark matter. But I think if we can get that, then we can start to turn up the, uh, the speed on a lot of what's here. And so what I think I'm gonna do real quick is go ahead and just make some more of these speed upgrades from Pneumaticraft so that we can speed up both of these hoppers kind of to their maximum potential. Now, of course, thanks to the fact that we now have our alchemistry machines, making things like redstone and lapis should be a fair bit easier. What we can do now is we can make one lapis. Once we have one lapis, we can dissolve that one lapis in our dissolver. That gets us sodium, calcium sulfate, molite, and silicon. If we teach our transmutation table each one of these, and also I'm gonna get rid of some stuff like the covalence just here for a minute, just to give us some more space, and uh, I'll throw the graphite blocks away for now. But if we make sure that our system knows how to make all of these, we can then take more of them out of the table and then put those into the combiner to make even more of them. So let's take a stack of sodium. Let's take a stack of calcium sulfide. Let's take a stack of molite. Of course, we don't need a stack of each one of these, like they're required in different quantities. But to start with, uh, we'll also get a stack of silicon. Uh, we can then take all of those. And if we go to the combiner, I think is where we want to be. We can then shift click in this recipe and we'll lock the recipe. And this is just going to make lapis for us. And so basically going forward, if we ever want more lapis or more redstone, instead of having to focus in on the mana pool, which is a bit faster, we can come over here and use the combiner instead, which essentially gives us a roundabout way of turning our EMC into lapis. Real quick, one thing that people do continually complain about is uh, my lack of a safety tube module here. The safety tube module can be placed onto a valve, and as it says here, this module will vent high pressure air if the tube pressure reaches 4.9 bar. So basically, if I accidentally leave too much fuel in here, it will get rid of any excess pressure and prevent an explosion. So we just need four gold ingots. We can then craft up a pressure gauge, and then we just need two levers and two pressure tubes. That seems fine. Let's take two cobblestone. I think we have some sticks lying around in here. We do indeed. We'll take two of those as well. And then in terms of the pressure tube, we already have that in our inventory. So boom and boom. And if I were to place this, I think onto one of our pre-existing tubes here. Now, whenever this gets to 4.9 bar, it's going to go ahead and start releasing gas automatically to prevent any of this from exploding. So we are running into a bit of a problem with 
our refinery filling up on certain fluids, specifically the kerosene and the gasoline. These are both filling up, and so all I'm doing here is just deleting them. If you take a bucket out and then right click it onto a bucket that's already down, it will just get rid of that excess bucket. Um, I don't think we need them, and if we do need them, we've still got plenty of them. We can make more in the future, but I need more diesel here to make more lubricant to make more speed upgrades. Okay, so I've made nine more speed upgrades. Let's see if this is any good. I am a little concerned because this hopper doesn't seem, even with the upgrades, doesn't seem to push in that fast. But let's see, we'll bump that up to nine. I think 10 is the max. Let's actually try five and 10 like that. And then let's bump you up to 20. I'm mostly intrigued if this is gonna keep up because it looks like it's not able, oh, it actually is out of dust, eh? That is unfortunate. Let me do this. It does seem like this hopper is also maybe not keeping up. Although maybe it is actually. Let's do that. I was just feeling the lag for a second. Um, I do wonder if we can do this. We totally can. That's very interesting. I think I did leave some fuel in here, which is why we just heard that little uh, gas valve. Oh my goodness. The, the sound effect gets stronger as well with every... Uh, when you try and speed it up. 20 per second is a lot, eh? How much time we got? Two hours and 40 minutes. I could right-click it again to take it to 64x, which it seems like it needs if we want to be able to make it ultra-fast. But this is working. That was pretty good. So yeah, this is the limiting factor now. So I do wonder if it's worth making, like, more of these, potentially. Possibly is the answer. Um, another option, of course, is these guys, the power flowers from... Oh, again, we're still just... We're still, did I take all of that out or did I leave some in? I left some in. Okay, that's still... That's fine. It's, it's releasing the excess gas, which is good. Uh, you do have to be careful with that because it's not super fast. If you try and accelerate this too far, even if you have the pressure tube, it will still explode if you're accelerating it faster than it can release the gas. But um, these power flowers are pretty nifty in that if you place them down, they just start generating EMC. So this first one is expensive. It requires 2.42 million EMC, but it will generate 102 EMC per second. And that's just passively. You don't have to do anything for that. And there are tiers that go all the way up to the final power flower, which produces uh, 48 trillion EMC per second, which is, of course, a bit insane, but it does require uh, 31.96 quadrillion EMC to make. So it's a bit expensive to get up there, but we essentially just need to start working our way through this. And at a certain point, we're going to get to a, uh, a power flower that is able to generate more EMC than this little setup that we have right here. This one is working pretty well, though. Let's go see how many EMC we have. We're up at 838,000, which is not bad. If we put our dark matter back in, we've got 1.25 million, but that's still not really close to the, the 3.65 we need for the energy condenser. Okay, so that is working. It's going to keep getting more EMC for us. I am realizing now that I don't really think, like we've gone back and forth on it throughout the episode, but I don't know if the energy condenser Mark II is really going to be worth it for us like even when we accelerated everything to a crazy degree just there the energy condenser mark 2 uh, mark 1 that we have kept up just fine uh, it, it did require a bit of a, a speed tick but right now we would have to make more of these dust generators to really get the benefit out of our first uh, energy condenser let alone an advanced one and so instead let's get the transmutation tablet so we'll drop you in we'll get all of the dark matter we only need four blocks one two three four and then we need i think it was four blocks of graphite and then i believe just a regular transmutation table and that should get us the transmutation tablet it does indeed and of course that completes the quest if we really wanted to we could just dump all that emc back in the system by putting it away but for us now we can just right click this anywhere we want and we have access to all of the stuff that we need no matter where we are so again going forward if we wanted to make lapis or redstone in here, I can grab the sodium and the silicon directly here instead of having to run back to the transmutation tablet every time we want to make something in particular, which is quite useful. Other quests that we can complete while we wait for our EMC to kind of passively tick up here are the silicon dust quest down here. This wants us to put 16 silicon into the compactor. That seems very straightforward. We'll drop that in over here. That's going to make us one silicon dust one is all we need because of course it does have an emc value and then in turn unlocks us the ability to make silicon from refined storage it does require a blast furnace which we don't have but very much so can make we can steal one of our pre-existing furnaces that's fine we might have some smooth stone in here we don't that is fine we could smelt it but we could also just do 
something like this. We only need three, and I've put down four. That's fine. Let's get ready with the Ultimine to break this as soon as it transforms. Fantastic. We can put the rest of the stone back in here, and that should basically be everything for the Blast Furnace. It is indeed. So we'll throw that down. We only need the one silicon, because again, once we have uh, just the one singular silicon, that does have, thankfully, an EMC value. We'll throw that away. And so now it looks like this is going to get us into refined storage, which would be quite useful. Our current storage system is fine. The cloud storage system does work, and it's nice to have everything in one centralized chest. Also, I guess I can take all of that. Uh, oh, that's awkward. I can take all of that cosmic dust out of here. And I think what we'll do is we'll maybe come back next time and start working on refined storage. We'll get that system up and running to replace our cloud storage setup. Over on the left here, we have a quest for a blaze rod, which is obviously incredibly easy for us to do. We have blaze both in our transmutation tablet and we've got a ton of it in here as well. In fact, we already have one blaze powder, so that's that quest complete. There are then quests for platinum dust and osmium dust. Do we have platinum and or osmium in here? It looks like the answer to both of those is no. Where can we get osmium from? We can get osmium by dissolving diorite. It's a very small chance. You can break down cosmic dust, which is very interesting, actually. Um, we do have 32 of it here. Let me dissolve the cosmic dust. It looks like dissolving the cosmic dust gives you different elements that you didn't have before. There's platinum, which is one we need. And there's osmium, actually. So that's both of those taken care of. Let's put both of those into our transmutation tablet. And then if we grab 16 osmium and 16 platinum, that should be everything we need to get the dust versions of both of those inside of the compactor. And of course, we'll make sure we learn both of those. But then it should once again just be a case of smelting those over here. Nice. Okay, cool. So that unlocks reactor casing. The reactor casing is platinum ingots, osmium, and blaze powder. So essentially, they all have an EMC value. We can, of course, take the platinum ingots just directly. We can take the osmium ingots just directly. And then the blaze powder doesn't have an EMC value, but we can just craft it from blaze rods, which do have EMC values. And then from there, getting reactor casing is fairly straightforward. I'm fairly certain we're going to need more than four reactor casing because now there is the fusion chamber controller and the fission chamber controller so both of these from my knowledge of our chemistry are used to generate different elements going forward so if there's an element that we don't have and that we want to get for example platinum obviously we already have platinum but if we didn't and there wasn't an easy way for us to get it we could have made it in the fusion controller or the fusion reactor which is a big multi-block structure by combining oxygen and utopium i think is how you pronounce that uh, the reason this works is that platinum has an atomic number of 78, and if you add 70 from utopium to the 8 of oxygen, that gets you the platinum. The fission reactor works in the same way, but reverse. The platinum can be placed into the fission reactor, and that will split it into half of 78. So you get two yttriums, which is two 39s. So that's what we can use the fusion and fission controller for. I don't know if we need it just yet, but if we are going to get them, I believe they use a ton of power like a lot of redstone flux and so we could do with getting a better source of power up and running before we press forward on that front this quest here just wants us to get a reactor glass which i think again is working towards the same reactor i think these are used to make the fission and fusion reactors but this is not too bad silicon dioxide and lead oxide lead oxide of course just good old-fashioned lead and oxygen we can drop both of those into the combiner as soon as we unlock the recipe once we have at least one, drop those all back in, and then let's take some lead oxide, and I believe it was silicon dioxide, and then combine both of those up. And that gets us reactor glass, which again, unfortunately, doesn't have any MC value, but does complete that quest there, which is interesting. We do also have access to flux points up here, but I do feel like we need a better source of power. Now, we do have access, I believe, two big reactors we got the bigger reactors mod installed and so it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at getting some reactor casing and a reactor controller because those are going to allow us to get a staggering amount of power a lot more power than we're currently getting from our flux mana field now i have a feeling that this might be where we have to use the fission controller 
because I don't think we have uranium or uranium dust. We don't have uranium. And the only things you can dissolve to get uranium are really just other forms of uranium and amethyst. And I don't think we have amethyst either. We could potentially try and mine to try some... Uh, actually, never mind. We could totally get amethyst with silicon dioxide and iron. And so I guess we do have what it takes in that scenario to get uranium. We can just take silicon dioxide. We can take iron. We can combine both of those in the combiner. Once we have at least four of those, we can craft those into a block of amethyst. All of this has an EMC value. I will take that block of amethyst though, because then we can take these and dissolve it for uranium. It's only a small percentage chance, so we do want to make sure we do it a fair few times. Give this a quick tap. But once we have just the one uranium, we can then drop that into here. And now we do have the fundamental resource, I believe, required to get into bigger reactors. So I think we need some reactor casing, which is just graphite ingots, iron, and uranium. Everything but iron there has an EMC value. The reactor power tap, I think, is how we're going to get the power out of the reactor. We then need an access port to put fuel in and take fuel out. And a reactor terminal, I think, is the controller of the reactor. And then my assumption would be that we just put uranium in as a fuel source to generate power through that reactor. We do have the energy collectors here from Project E. They're not as good as what we have here. This is generating definitely more than 40 EMC per second, which is what you can get with the, uh, the highest tier of energy collector. But it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at maybe making some of these and putting them down to get some more EMC. They're not particularly difficult to make, so I feel like there's no real harm in trying here. If I get enough compressed stone here to make a furnace, we should then just be able to take one glass, one block of diamond, and six blocks of glowstone. One block of diamond is just nine diamonds. We should check if a block of diamond has an EMC value. If it does, we should just put that into the transmutation tablet so we don't have to keep doing this. I also do need to keep remembering that I have the tablet on me. I don't have to keep manually walking back over to the physical table. The block of diamonds does have an EMC value. We'll put that there just for ease of use in the future. And then glass we do have available. It also has an EMC value. And so boom, that gets us an energy collector mark one. We can put this in. And I believe the way this works is we can place it down next to our energy condenser. And I think it's just going to generate EMC for that collector. What I will do though, is I will see about upgrading this to a higher tier here. This one requires the previous one with a lot of glowstone and some dark matter. That should be fine. We've got over half a million EMC and glowstone is incredibly cheap. So we'll take all of that and we'll make the next tier here. The tricky bit, we'll also save that. The tricky bit though is this next tier requires the red matter, which actually doesn't seem too bad. We'll take three dark matter and then at least six Eternalis fuel. That should get us our first red matter, which is also a quest. And then from there, boom, we have the tier three energy collector. So just to check how this works, if I were to, I'm gonna break this chest temporarily. Let me put down the energy collector like that. I am gonna put the diamonds back in up here. Although I guess we can do blocks of diamonds as well. It's not strictly necessary. Um, although I guess if we really wanted to, we could do dark matter blocks. Those are substantially higher in, in EMC value. I really should have put the red matter into here now that I think about it. It's not the end of the world. It's not hard to make, but just um, following on with tradition, it would have made it easier to get the red matter in the future. Let me clear my inventory just a little bit with all of these, and then let's get more of you. I think that if we were to place down the energy collector next to the energy condenser, that should, in theory, begin generating EMC for the collector. And it totally does. Look at that. It's still going up despite there being no items in here. So we can get, not that, I didn't, I didn't mean to right click with the cosmic dust. Let me put that cosmic dust away. The reason I'm not putting it in here is I want to have some cosmic dust available if we want to make like some more redstone or some more lapis fairly easily. But um, what I am thinking here is that if we get more of these and we can only get one more, we can then put a second one down. And I believe that's going to double the amount of EMC that we generate per second from that. It's not a massive increase, mostly due to the fact that these only do 40 EMC per second each. But if we uh, sleep, that should accelerate that 
I didn't mean to speed my bed up. Um, if we sleep, that's going to accelerate that quite a bit. And if we just have those down next to the energy condenser whilst it's doing its normal work of turning all of our elements into EMC, it's just going to be that extra little bit of EMC that we're just going to generate passively. So that is working. We are generating some stuff slowly but surely. I think what we'll do next time, we'll come back and there's a few things we can work on. We can, of course, start with refined storage. That's going to make just our storage situation a whole lot better and it's going to make crafting a whole lot easier. Uh, there is at some point an EMC link. I forget the name of it every time, but if I go to at project EX, I think I will see it. I think it's called the transmutation interface. This guy right here, if we have this down, it allows our refined storage system to have access to everything in our transmutation tablet, which would be fantastic. Although again, 11.4 quadrillion EMC is quite expensive, but we can start working on refined storage. We can start working towards those extreme reactors and that larger power generation. We could look at flux points. We're probably gonna have to do that to start moving power. And then all while we're doing that, we're gonna start generating more EMC. But what I might do as well at some point fairly soon is look at setting up multiple more of these cosmic dust generators because they're actually fairly easy to make and then we could look at uh, kind of pooling all of the cosmic dust from all of the cosmic dust generators together into one setup with ideally a faster energy condenser or even with multiple energy condensers to allow us to start making a ton more emc incredibly quickly but those are all problems for future isaac because for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of universe io there 